Welcome to Losing a Child, Always Andy's Mom. On this podcast, we journey through the devastating experience of the death of a child. Grief is seldom discussed openly in our culture, and the death of a child makes people feel even more uncomfortable. We approach the topic openly and honestly, speaking to people who have lost loved ones and experts who help care for them. Whether you are a parent experiencing loss or someone who wants to support another going through this tragedy, this podcast strives to offer hope and help. Welcome to episode number 270 of Losing a Child, Always Andy's Mom. I'm Marcy Larson, Andy's Mom. Today's episode is a recording of the live stream that we just did this week. Originally, this live stream was going to be called a grief and sacrifice because it was taking place on what is Veterans Day here in the United States. And often when we think about veterans, we think about their sacrifices and what they've done. But really, it kind of changed a little bit. And I wanted to rename this episode Honor and Grief. And just as we honor our veterans, we also need to honor our own grief and honor the hard work that it takes in grief. So as you listen today, I want you to think of that. I want you to think of how you can honor yourself, can honor your grieving heart, and know that you deserve an award for all of the hard work that you have done. Welcome to our live stream episode. I have a couple of people here with me today. Of course, Gwen, like I always have. So Gwen is here. Hello. Hi. And then we also have Carrie. And Carrie's here from Luella's Lodge. And you know I've been gushing about Luella's Lodge recently. So we're so excited to have you on, Carrie. (laughs) Thank you. Oh, So I'm having Carrie on because this is kind of a special time of year for us, isn't it, Carrie? It is. For you. Yes. yes. So if you remember listening to some past episodes, we've been talking about Luella's Lodge and how amazing that is and how I met my uh, amazing new person who is doing all of my video editing now Yay. through Luella's. It has a very special place in my heart. But really, Luella's is such a place of healing. So if you are looking for a place to go to try to help heal your broken mama's heart. I can't recommend Luella's Lodge more. Um, And so Carrie, I want you to tell us a little bit about Luella's Lodge and what's kind of going on right now. Sure. Yes. And thank you so much, Marcy, for coming. And it was awesome to meet you in person and made all those amazing connections. So I appreciate you cheering for us and spreading the word and being amazing. Thank you. Absolutely. It's my Um, pleasure. Yeah, so we're Luella's Lodge. We're a nonprofit in Oakwood, Illinois. So we're a couple hours south of Chicago, pretty close to the Indiana border. And our main goal as part of our mission to support grieving parents is by providing therapeutic and healing retreats. So we do those about once a month during retreat season, which we're wrapping up our 2024 retreat season now. We started back in October of 2021 was our very first. I think now we're at 23 retreats, 250 parents, and we just had two more states yesterday in a retreat. So I think we're up to 17 states that we've served now. So people from all over the country are finding out about us and visiting. We have purposefully small and intimate retreats. We do moms, We do couples, and then we um, also do a mom with her support sister. So moms can come and bring any supportive female that's been in their life. So it can be a literal sister. It can be a best friend. It could be your mom. And yeah, we do those about once a month. As I mentioned, we're kind of wrapping up for 2024, which means we just announced our 2025 schedule. So if you're interested, yay! Yeah, we're doing it again. Starting just a tad earlier this time too. So we're doing March to November. We take a little bit of a break in the winter just because we need the break. And if you know Illinois, like November through February isn't the most beautiful time or December through February isn't the most beautiful time. So we take a little bit of a break. But if you're interested, especially if you're interested in the mom's retreats, I say get 
on our website, get an application in early just because our mom's retreats tend to fill up pretty quickly. Well, and I know last year we did that one in September and it was just kind of a lot of my listeners went to that one because I was going to be there and it was very rewarding and wonderful. And I certainly hope to do that again. I kind of hope to be involved in that in the fall retreat again. And then, you know, I have a group of people that is going to be renting out the full retreat center and using it for ourselves as bereaved mom too. So know that that's an option too. So you can sign up for the retreat. Mm-hmm. But if you have a group of people that you already kind of gather with, that is an option as well to just rent that facility because, oh, it's just so healing. I mean, it is really, really amazing. Amazing. Everything about it. Yes. Thank you, Mercy. Yes, that is an option. If you want to just do a private rental, you can do that. If you're like, hey, Carrie, do you know a massage therapist that might come while we're staying or somebody to leave yoga? I can give you their contacts and you can schedule that too if you don't want, you know, a full retreat with programming and all that stuff if you want to just do a private rental. And Mercy, I'm just flattered that you guys wanted to come back and that you love the space enough to bring people that you love back into the space. Uh, with them. No question. No question. I, I, there's, I'm thrilled. Yeah, I appreciate that so much. There is something just there's just something supportive and healing about the space, whether I think yeah. you're in there as, you know, renting it privately just as a quiet getaway or if it's a retreat. So, yeah, that is an option. If retreats aren't your thing or if you, you want to bring your family instead or if you want to do a girls weekend, we're here for that, too. And I'm always ha- happy to if I'm around a pop over. We live um, right next door. So. I'm always happy to come over and say hi to. I know. I love that too. I have a clarifying question. As someone who's not super familiar with how it works, when someone signs up, do they pay a deposit? Is it due in full? Like if they're thinking about planning for next year, what does that mean financially for them? Yeah. So we um, require half deposit down um, and then the full amounts due. I think it's one month before the retreat. Oh, please. I'm to decide, but we ask that you make that decision. Right. Sure. One month before, just because we do, like I said, especially with the mom's retreat, right. we tend to kind of get a wait list. And so we want to make sure that if you're going to cancel, we can get somebody in there with, with ample time. But yeah, thanks for that question, Gwen. Yeah, that was a great question. And we've got a couple of people have written some comments that I would yeah. like to go through. So Michelle wrote in that her friend R- R- Rochelle was just there and she just absolutely loved it. Um, and Melissa, I want to read Melissa's whole comment because Melissa has been the two Luellas. Uh, Luella's Lodge, what a wonderful place for bereaved mamas. I met some amazing moms, left a little of my anger behind, and was able to relax a little. I'm hoping to go in 2025 with my support sister. Just amazing. And I really loved that specific thing that she put. I left a little bit of my anger behind. Because isn't that the kind of thing that you like to hear, right? They leave a little pain behind, a little anger behind, a little bit of maybe anxiety behind, those emotions that kind of take over. If you can learn to let go of a little bit of that, what a beautiful gift. Yeah. Yeah, I especially love the, and I, yeah, I, I was going to say, I especially love like the breath work. When we did all that breath work, I felt like that was a time for me that just really had some release of some emotion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so... Marcy just spoke a little bit about breath work. So that's kind of one of the activities that we offer during retreats. We do um, typically yoga, breath work. We have a memorial art project. We do some guided group discussion, um, typically some massage therapy and some pampering is in there as well. And what else, Marcy? Did you guys do anything else during yours? We had some virtual group-led discussions, activities. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was great. Yeah. And I actually loved how organized it was. And now we kind of went from one thing to another. I, I thought that was amazing. I thought that was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you. Yep. We try to keep the schedule robust, but then also give you guys a lot of free time. Um, mm-hmm. I always joke because I'm like, I think if we just had the space and that was it, like, everybody would still have a great time. Like sometimes when our practitioners come in and it's like time to transition to an activity, like pulling the moms, like they're having this awesome conversation and it's amazing. And it's like, okay, but our, you know, Yogi's going to be here for an hour. Let's get out there and start stretching. So yeah, it's, it's 
um, we try to do, you know, some opportunities for free time and just group discussion and napping if you need to nap and journaling and walking the grounds or taking a boat out. Um, we have some kayaks and a uh, paddle boat at, or enjoying the hot tub, right? That's another All right. Option. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So Dana wrote in too. I loved it too. So peaceful. So many intentional grief activities. I can't wait to go back. So love that. Thank you so much. So, you know, if you are interested, you can go to Luella's Lodge. Great. Yep. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then here we got, I was at Luella's in October. It was a support sister retreat. We were all able to take our masks off and just be Mm -hmm. such a time for us. And that's true. Those masks that we all put on, you know, we think about the, obviously maybe in medicine, I think about the actual physical mask, but the kind of emotional mask. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So thank you again so much, Carrie, for coming on. Um, I am so excited to go back. And I get to go back two times next year. Too. No. I'm so excited. You know why you just squeeze you in person. Give me a big hug. No, I know. It's great. It's so great. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bone. All right. Okay. Bye. All right, Gwen. Now it's back to you and I. So yeah. I... This ties in pretty well. Uh, today in the United States, it is Veterans Day. So I know not all of you are, but in Veterans Day, we honor our veterans. And when you think about veterans, you tend to think about people who have sacrificed and then yeah. you also think about honoring and tradition. And right. that's why we thought when you're grieving, though, first of all, you do go through a lot of sacrifice. And secondly, mm-hmm we kind of deserve to be honored in a way as well, too. So it's sort of... Very much so. Yes, I wish we could have told them all that we would take them to Applebee's and they could have a bereaved moms, you know, veterans get a free meal. Wouldn't it be nice if we could have done <laughs> that, that for all of them? Yeah. Um, because yeah, I think that's not working, but, you know, mm. good try. <laughs> right. But it's not that we're saying that we... It... I, what am I trying to say? Like the notoriety or that we need to be recognized. But the fact that no one recognizes the hard work and the sacrifice and the sacrifices that you have given up so much and, you know, um, not being seen for those sacrifices is difficult, I think. And and just I could tell by the number of comments, you know, so our first question was related to sacrifice. What has the death of your child caused you to give up? Because one of the definitions of the word sacrifice is to give up or suffer a loss of. And there were a few, um, quite a few that talked about family and friends who do not understand. Um, but then also um, one person said gain closer relationships with family members and new friends. Um, But somebody else, when it came to friendship, said, I don't get invited out to dinner anymore with friends. Even ladies at church that I'm friends with don't want to invite me to do things outside of church. I've met a lot of people who feel that way, that they feel uninvited because maybe they're, you know, perceived as the downer or maybe the friends don't feel comfortable because they don't know what to do if the topic did come up. And a couple other people, you know, said definitely family and friends. So um, that's a sacrifice. And it's a sad one to me because we shouldn't have to lose friends when we've lost so much already. No, no, no. It, it's really funny because just a few weeks ago now, I had a mom on and one of the things that she said was that she enjoyed hanging around with other bereaved parents. And she said, we're the most fun. We're fun. (laughs) Yeah. And I I love that she said that. And I feel like I have the most fun, honestly, with other bereaved parents because, again, like Andrea had said, you could take the mask off. Right. The mask is off. And when the mask is off, you really, truly can have fun right and, but but that's funny because you said you know oh they don't invite me they don't seem to want to spend time with me thinking that you're a downer and you're not really like if they'd let you be your authentic self you right are not a downer necessarily mm-hmm. right it's well, just that when they feel scared yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think it's connected to no to something dana said in response to that was sympathy for other people's problems is something she's lost problems that i used to think were huge now feel like nothing compared to losing brogan i guess on the bright side of that i've given up the little problems 
And I think sometimes when you said bereaved moms are fun or this person said we can take the mask off, part of it is you don't spend time on trivial crap. No, because you realize don't. that it's not significant. It's not life giving. It's not. It's just stuff, and you don't have time for that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's really funny because you know I I see my therapist. I still see my mm-hmm. therapist, and you know Nancy. I think you know Nancy, don't you? I Nancy? do very much. So. so so anyway, I and I was talking to my therapist just this last week. I always was in BSF Bible Study Fellowship. I was in mm-hmm. Bible Study Fellowship for years. I used to be in leadership, and I was in children's leadership, and then an adult leadership. And um, I was in it for a little while after losing Andy, and I just had such a hard time. I just couldn't do it because their prayer requests just seems kind of sort of trivial. And if anything came up and if I got teary, then they all looked at me weird. And I just felt like kind of a leper in that group. Like I just did not fit in anymore. And I I said, if only I could be in a group if just bereaved moms in BSF, if it was just a group of bereaved moms, I'd be great. We'd Uh be great. And I would totally go back. If I'm being that. And she said, I think you should look into it. I think you should talk to them about that. And so I think I'm mm-hmm. going to talk to them about see all of them. 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 And see if there would be some sort of option for that. Or just bereaved people. It wouldn't even have to be bereaved moms. But if you were like a bereaved person, I just, again, I just feel like the silliness. I mean, I remember my last group I was in, the one woman was like really into the fact that at church, church needed to be really traditional music. And not uh, contemporary music. And of course, I sing in the contemporary band. So mm-hmm. that, you know, the lyrics don't mean as much. Everything doesn't mean as much, whatever. And she's going on about this. And all I'm thinking of was what a stupid conversation that was and why it really just doesn't matter. And whatever, mm-hmm. you know, is more important and you feel more is what's matter. And like, if that's good for her, great. It's good for her. But I cannot believe we're actually having a conversation about this. Yeah. And and talking about it because it just seemed really trivial. So, and I feel like if I was in a group with bereaved women, those topics wouldn't come up. Like that just wouldn't be a part of it yeah. anymore, right? Uh, I, I, I'm having this thought of Jesus preferring to be with the, the bereaved moms too, then, you know, because he didn't like that religious talk of those rules and the, you know, so I just think he would love to be, he'd be like, no, I, I'm so, not. Okay. Not, not, not. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. It's worth, you know, I'm just going to look into it. Well, yeah, if it takes too much effort, but, but I think it might be kind of nice, to be honest. Yeah. So, and and it would feel like I could fit back in again because I just feel so out of place is the right. problem. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, back to Luella's for just a second, that is why I, it's, that's such a great place to be because you feel like you fit in. Uh-huh. I mean, we all fit in there. Yeah. And you just have this camaraderie from the very, very beginning. Oh, so much so we all want to go where we belong and and yeah you know now you don't belong you feel you don't belong at bsf i mean they don't perceive that you don't belong oh no of course not no, right and it's and it's how i feel right right one of the other pieces of this question that i think we have to get to is a little more on this i don't want to say serious side but there were many yeah. people um who said never being a grandmother or a mother-in-law dreams of what i thought my future would be and there were several like that, um, you know, that this was their only child and yeah. the possibility of grandchildren, um, add another to the grandchildren list, grandchildren, those future losses, they're so hard. And so it's that, it's just all those things we hope and dream for. And then there were several who talked about enjoying life, truly living, finding joy, and then one was, I feel like I don't belong anywhere anymore. And that, and someone did say, you belong with us in our group and put a heart. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, yeah, you belong here. You belong right. here. We all belong here. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Uh, and there were a couple other things too. When Alicia wrote snuggles, bedtime rituals, oh, yes. the support workers that were in my son's life, all the people in his world that weren't directly in my world. Love that too, right? Those are some really concrete little things, the little things that you miss every single day. The yeah. snuggles, the hugs, the kisses, the I love yous, the all of those things are the hard things on the day to day. Yeah. 
I'm going to cry, but I conducted a funeral service today of a friend whose child died suddenly. And one of the things I talked to them about was the the goodbyes. And and there's just so many. And those little things, you you know, the snuggle, those become really big things. Though, you know, though that saying goodbye to that hug or that touch or that body is is and, and it's what you just long for. You know, yes. just long for the hug, right? You yeah. long to right. hear the voice. Yeah. Long for those little things. Yeah. yeah. The things that you kind of took for granted. Yeah. The other thing, too, that I really appreciated was Karen writing in, I've been forced to give up a sense of certainty, the feeling of control, even if it was elusive, the ability to dream about the future. So all of those things, I think uh, that kind of goes with that feeling that your world is a safe place. Right. It just doesn't feel safe anymore. No. Nope. Right? right. It's completely changed. Yes, we've made, a, we have an assumptive world we live in and we assume that we are going to out, outlive our children, right? And so right there, that's just, you can't, nothing's safe anymore. If that can happen, what else can happen to me? And the loss of security is really hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Because as you said, that sort of feels like the minimum to you, right? That you'll at least outlive your children. Right. right. You know, when you when you get married, you think, well, I may or may not outlive my spouse. And that's that's a true thing that you think about probably from early on. Right. Yeah. I don't think many people at all think about outliving their children. Only if you maybe had that in your immediate family, might you think of it. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I just don't think you would. Right. And uh, the comment um, from Dana was, I was just thinking about loss of security. And and she talked about the feeling of control back to Karen's thing is, you know, as parents, we we control the temperature, we control our speed, we, we control all these things to make our children safe. And then our world, like, we had no control over what happened. I know. I know. Yeah. I really appreciate T- Tama's comment, too, because Tama oh, yeah. wrote... I also don't like the feeling of pity from others. When I'm around other bereaved moms, I feel unity, understanding, and belonging. That's t- absolutely true. It's that that pity is hard. Mm-hmm. That's a great comment because you're right. And that is hard when you just feel like you're pitied or you feel like, you know, you mm-hmm. get the look, the look yeah. that people get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder how she's doing today. It right, was, right. Well, today, <laughs> good day, today a bad eye. It's yeah. funny, I can't remember. I I spoke to somebody oh, quite a while ago now. But anyway, she said when her daughter was sick, people always like turn their head. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And then she said, and it seemed like then after she died, they just turned their head the other way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like, yeah. It was a tilt to the left and now it's a tilt to the right. But it's tough. Oh. The head tilts and oh, you know. Yeah, I've never thought about that, but now I'll pay attention. I'll have to. <laughs> now you'll pay attention drive to the head tilt. tilt. Yeah, when people go, oh, well. yeah. To give the, do we want to give some of the other questions some? Time? Yeah, I think so. I think okay. we should go on to the next one. We just had so many comments. So if we didn't mention your comment, yeah. it's really because there were just so many. So, right. So, so the second uh, yeah. question was in ways do you honor? your grief and we had some beautiful responses they all were just amazing um we'll start with carolyn's mass intentions prayer and helping others spiritually uh yeah and then the next one going to the cemetery listening to my son's playlist reading about grief listening to podcasts about grief writing about grief allowing myself to cry talking about my son taking days off on the anniversary and on some days leading up to that day allowing myself to enjoy some things not related to my grief, taking care of myself, finding ways to have a relationship with my son in a new way. Weren't those all beautiful? They all And I love, and I love how that, so the question was, how do you honor your grief? And those Mm -hmm. are simple ways to do that every day, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, it didn't have to be a big like, oh my gosh, we do this 5K or we do this golf outing or something big to honor your grief. Uh-huh. It's how you do it in the everyday life. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, you know, just listening to the, the playlist, allowing herself, hers was the actual work of grief that she does mm-hmm. to honor it. Mm-hmm. And we had some mm-hmm. other responses. 
Michelle said, I pay it forward to others in honor of my son. I share a lot on social media about aspects of grief to help others understand. It's an outlet for me. I have and still do participate in grief group connecting with other moms. I honor my grief by paying attention to the boundaries I need as well. I really like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good. Mm -hmm. And then there are some more that are a little more intentional, special things. Right. Lighting a cr candle at Christmas time. Those are special things that you do just certain times of the year, going to the blue Christmas service each year. I mean, those are beautiful things, too, that you do. Uh -huh. I like that. I don't know if all of you have heard about the blue Christmas services, but blue Christmas services are Christmas services for grieving people uh -huh. because Christmas isn't always a bright, cheerful time. It can be a really sad, sorrowful time oh. when you're grieving. So I love that they do services like that yeah. to kind of honor that. And it's not all joy to the world, right? It's no. not all joy to the world. No, no, it is not. I I do many of them. So I'm glad people yeah, have them as well. There was something um, Laura said in besides journaling, spending time with other moms who can compassionately sit with her. She said, taking care of Luke's resting place. And I do think that a lot of, of parents find that a way to honor, like, um, and, and a lot of bereaved. It's not just bereaved parents, but I, I really, really, really believe that's very honoring and it feels um, right and good to yeah. do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then they have a Luke Legacy Fund. And she also mentioned leading grief share and sitting with others. So there's this uh, scholarship for young life camps and for people to hear the gospel. And then they, she said it was Luke's idea before he passed away from cancer. So that's continuing on and carrying that torch. Of I mean, that truly is his legacy, right? Right. Yes. I love what Dana wrote here, too. I'm fortunate that my career as a pediatric oncology nurse allows me to honor my grief. Par most parents at work don't know I'm a bereaved mom. As I watch people lose their children, I can't help but think of Rogue and, and have so much sympathy for them. I go on bereaved moms retreats, do virtual support groups, listen to podcasts, read books about grief. But that is a way that she can do that kind of help a little more quietly, mm -hmm. certainly. I mean, I think about my own career just in general pediatrics, so obviously not dealing with cancer the vast majority of the time, only in small portions do I have to do that. But uh, it it just changes your compassion and how you feel towards mm -hmm. grieving people and Oh. Right. Just just people who are hurting and in pain. Right. Yeah. Well, you you're you're okay sitting in those dark spaces because you know, I mean, before that you've talked about, you know, how it's changed you as a physician, um, to what you're comfortable with. And and I'm sure even, you know, she said most parents don't know I'm a bereaved mom, but they can sense that she can be in those places. It's and different. She, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No yeah. question. No, I... it's funny too because I recently, just in the last week, so you, some of you may know. So I have these my be still bracelets, mm -hmm. right? I have lots yep. of be still bracelets. Gwen has a be still bracelet. Yep. I mean, a lot of people I know have have my be still bracelets, and I I give them out all the time. So if you went to the Wallace Lab this last year with me, everyone left with a Wallace with a yep. be still bracelet. But in this past week, I've, I've given away some just at the office. I, I saw a little girl. She was having lots of fears and anxiety and just hurting and worries. And and it all it and she's just an anxious girl, but she hasn't been able to be in her own room since a smoke detector had gone off like a month ago. And she couldn't do it. But the smoke detector went off at school and she was fine. And then the mom said, well, why were you fine? She said this in the room with me. And she said, well, because she, she goes to a, a Christian school. And she said, well, because God and the saints are at school. <laughs> and, and the mom says, oh, <laughs> God and the saints are at home, honey. And and so I said to her, do you like bracelets? And so we sounded out and we had the word be still. We talked about how that would be a reminder that God was with her and things like that. And I, you know, it took certainly a little longer, but I turn around and mom's crying and, and oh. all this, but it's. It just goes to show when you're willing to sit in the dark space, even when it's not that dark, really. I mean, for her, it's not that she's going through something horrific. She just got really scared by a smoke alarm, and now she's just super scared to be in her room. But mm -hmm. those little things, if you can show compassion for people, 
I don't know. I just feel like it's changed me in a different way to be able to just reach out to other people, right? When they're hurting and in pain, no matter what the pain is. So, right. so and, and again, we've talked about this before, but you showed that little girl of vulnerability because you probably explained, you know, I wear this because of, or whatever you said yeah. that it, it just, they go, oh, I'm not the only one, even though it's not the exact thing that you need to be still about. It's, you know, but right. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, really. But it's important, right? It's important. Uh, Yeah. A couple of parents talked in here about um, taking their daughter's ashes with them where they visit. Someone else said they take their child's uh, uh, stuffy, I think she called it when they traveled, you know, so in honoring them and having those ways that they do that, like bringing your child with you, you know, in a sense. Well, and somebody just wrote in a comment here a little bit ago. I lost my son 10 and a half months ago, and she said her biggest issue is p- other people constantly reminding her that her son is gone. Obviously, she doesn't need to be reminded of that. She knows that. But she talked about her son's ashes, too. She uh, shares her son's ashes to be sent around the world as he liked to travel. So that was a way that she can honor him and a way that she can Uh think about him as spreading little bits of him all over the world. That's beautiful tribute. It is. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... A couple, one other person said about volunteering at the Bereaved Moms Retreat and paying it forward. And I just love that so much. And your program, when I I listen, it's all these parents then in their healing and as they begin, that they are helping others. And it's just the natural cycle that we need. Imagine if none of your listeners ever reached out and started a group or started the lodge or, you know, all the so many things that you have featured on your show i'd be so sad yeah yeah wow well and that brings me back to last week's podcast so last week's podcast it was just released a few days ago was david kessler and many of you know david kessler Uh and he's got a new book on meaning making and i loved how we talked about meaning making and how He gets a little bit of kickback sometimes from that. And we've talked about this, too, that even the first time you and I did an episode on meaning making, I was kind of a little bit defensive about the whole idea of not really wanting there to be meaning from this. Yeah, nothing good can come. Right. Nothing good can come of this. And what I loved that he said was that meaning can come from just the sharing, you know, he shared this beautiful story about talking to this mom and she said nothing meaningful can ever come from this and she went on and talked to for quite a long time about her toddler child who had died and and said at the end you see how there can never be meaning that can come from this and he said i see how you can feel that way but this conversation these last two hours have been so meaningful Mm -hmm. what you and i have done it's been so meaningful and it was that meant a lot to me because I thought, wow, every single conversation that I have with anybody about on this podcast is meaningful. Absolutely. And I have so many people tell me like I it, that, that will write to me and hesitate and say, I don't know that I want to share my story because I haven't done anything. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, yes. We've heard that a lot. We've heard that a lot. Yes, you have. Mm-hmm. And just the telling of the story is so incredibly meaningful. It and is. it means so much to me and it means so much to other people. Uh, I, I just love that. And, and honestly, I think that goes along very much with this kind of theme, too, of mm-hmm. honoring and honoring your grief. And think about that because this is how we honor each other. We honor our children. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's really, truly, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is. And I remember your kickback and, and I'm glad that David put it in a way that you could see that you, the meaning in every conversation you have is, is meaningful. And so, you know, it's not like, yeah, I just, I love that. I'm I'm glad that yeah. resonated with you. No, it was it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And it feels like it's been coming around, right? I mean, because we right. had the last, we did a podcast not too long ago on purpose and how I felt different that time than the first time you and I brought, kind of broached this. Right. Way. It was different. 
It was different yeah. this time. Yeah. So I feel less guilt about the idea of how there being meaning because it's not the horrific event. It's it's the healing. Mm-hmm. It's all of it. Right. And it's right. sharing it. Yeah. Yes. And just someone wrote in, too. I agree. Just hearing people's stories makes me feel less alone. And that's meaning when you feel less alone, when you make other people feel less alone. Yeah. So if you want to share your story, write to me. Although I probably won't get to you until next year now because we're getting quite quite the yeah. backup. I guess I love that we're getting a backup. Yeah. Us. But if you want to be on, write to me. We can schedule right. you. We can get you in. Well, one second. I was just thinking this. Bereaved Moms gig is getting really competitive where you got to sign up for the lodge already for next year. If you want to be on the podcast. We've got a real movement going here. I know. Yeah. If you want to. It's so funny because somebody wrote to me just a few days ago and I was like, okay, I'm going to do one more interview before January. And then like, if you want that one, I can give you one more. And that won't even air until mid-February. But and then I had somebody else write to me just yesterday and they thought, we're going to be putting this one on for a while, I think. And don't we be honest, you inked me out of one so that you could interview someone. I did. I did. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Okay. I've got to I've got to admit all of this to all of you. Okay. So normally we do this with Gwen every six weeks, right? And But around that point, Gwen is having surgery. So I use that as an excuse. But I have so many people that I wanted to get in that wanted to be on that I thought, you know what, we're just going to give Gwen a little bit of a break. So we're not going to have the next one in six weeks. It's going to be more like nine weeks to give Gwen a little time to heal. Um, And because I really didn't want to push people off so long. Yeah, it worked for all of us. Yeah, it works for everybody. It worked for everyone. But I did push you off. I did. You're totally right about that. And I do have to say, it's platform that we use so that we're i'm just going to bring this up now too yep. so right now we use a platform that can stream to three different places at the same time so this goes on always annie's mom facebook page gwen's facebook page greek guide and instagram although not totally sure it's working i think it's working i'm not sure anyway that service is going to get far too expensive for me starting december 1st so we're not going to do that anymore i think we're probably just going to try facebook live uh and we'll see how that goes for a while or I think we can do maybe some stuff through Zoom. I don't know. We're going to figure something else out just mm-hmm. because the budget does not allow for me to keep doing this service. So it's going to look a little bit different going forward. But know that we're going to still try to have these in this format because I really do like the live stream format as then being able to have people contribute, even if it's, you know, just a couple of dozen people contributing, it's still really valuable, I think, to get that immediate feedback. I, I agree. It just feels different than when we've been pre-recorded. So, mm-hmm. All right. I love this last question that you did. The last question. It was my favorite. Okay. If you could win a medal as a bereaved parent, what would yours be called? Love that. That was awesome. It's awesome. Okay. The, the comment. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should read each one just because, okay. you know, okay. some of the other comments were the same, like, oh, loss of friends or losing. But this one, I think each person should get their own. Method. Yeah, I think so, too. I think so, too. <laughs> so we have Andrea. Andrea's would be called the Medal of Honor. So beyond honor to have been my daughter's mom. Love that. That's beautiful. Yes. Holly said living in her spotlight and still loving it. That is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> Carolyn wrote, heart of gold with my son in my heart. Beautiful as Paul. Yeah. Melissa, pay it forward for our baby girl, Chelsea. She loved paying it forward. And then another Melissa wrote, changed heart award. I'll never be the same. And I'm thankful for the gifts my daughter left me, not only to remember her, but the compassion I've learned to develop for myself and others. Changed heart award. I, I love that name. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, like we could all get that one right. Club. Yes. You know, we totally all get that you know, this club that no one wants a membership to, but we don't always name the club. I think the club could be called, you know, Changed Heart Club. Yeah. Or that award. Yeah. Okay. You got the next one? Yes. Um, David said, not sure what to officially call it, but I would be 
for finishing the race because the finish line is heaven and Jesus would be there to welcome me home and then point to his side and say, there is someone here who has been waiting for you to arrive and it will be my son, Nick. Uh, and Tootie wrote, live like Cole. Cole. That's, mm-hmm. that's awesome for sure. I made it through today. <laughs> A Karen broke that. They award. Very good. Oh my gosh. And then Demetra wrote Surviving a Shattered Heart Award. That mm-hmm. would be a good award name. I like that one. I do too. Um, someone wrote a comment underneath. Marge wrote, um, Queen of Shattered Hearts. Maybe it's because I like Tara's more than medals. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say- okay. And then Tammy wrote Sparkle for Abby would be the gold, her gold. Uh, mm-hmm. Still Living would be the silver. And I Got Out of Bed would be bronze. <laughs> I love that. How creative was that? Those are great. Those yeah. are really, really great. Like you could get one for different days. I, I love, And I love the fact that the bronze is just get out of bed. Okay. But yeah. it's, you still got a medal today. Oh, well, this is a great one. one. Still third that's place there. Yeah, that's what, you know, when I'm with Burry, people sometimes, they, they look so defeated. And I look at them and I, uh, you put on mascara today. Like, the, yeah, those, that's you're, great. You're dressed. Yeah, you've combed your hair. You've brushed your teeth. And when they realize that I acknowledge that that is something that they barely accomplished, but they did do it. And they're like, oh, that feels good to be recognized. I think Marge also had a comment that I'm not sure I deserve about a lot yet. Maybe next year I might have a different answer as these days are just hard. And I don't know how long it's been for her. But yes, yeah, some of them don't feel like they're um, have done anything right that. Um, mm-hmm. But I think if she can look at maybe she could get the I got out of bed award. Yeah, let's just yeah. go for the I got out of bed award because that right. happened. Yeah, but I wondered about Tammy's because I don't know her, but the sparkle for Abby, I, the sparkle, like, was that a special oh. word for them or did she just create that? No, that's a special thing with Abby. Okay. That is all right. Abby. Thing. Okay. And she lives that's in the awesome. UK and Abby's sparkle. It's so funny because rem- I remember so much about, I've, you know, I've done 100 and <laughs> yes. 70 episodes now or 270, 270 yeah. episodes. And yet, you know, I think of Abby and Abby sparkles and mm. her best friend and all of that. All those stories just come right flooding back. So I love that. I love that. She just loves sparkles. All I right. love the next one too. The next one was Amy writing the best make fake smile award. Yeah. Many of us could get that. I feel like, yeah, I could do pretty well with that award. Uh huh. Fooling everybody. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alicia said, queen of distracting myself. And then Laura said, me too. Like she could yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then the last two, Dana wrote the Brogan's Mom Award and Michelle wrote the Corbin's Mom Forever Award and just holding on. So those are yeah. very, very sweet as well. But I am glad that we just kind of went through all of those because those are beautiful. They and are. I love thinking about them. So as you are listening, whether you are listening live or you are listening over the next weeks as the podcast episode po- podcast episode comes out, what would your award be? What is it? Think about it yourself. And if you want to be like Tammy and give yourself three different award levels, I like that too. I mean, that think about there'd be different different days you maybe earn different things. But it's a beautiful, beautiful thought. And I thank you for bringing that up, Gwen. That is really well, important I, to think about that. Right. And I've said this before or on here. I mean, part of it came from my thought that I've always said is that, you know, the word honor is to tribute or give kudos to. And and again, there's no parade for bereaved people that says, hey, you're doing a great job. And I tell people, I'm sitting on the sidewalk of your grief cheering for you. Like, keep going. You can do this. And, you know, giving them those honors and kudos and just the you're doing hard things. And, and just acknowledging that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I love you kind of putting it down, though, for all of us to think about it for ourselves, mm-hmm. to think about what our own award yeah. should be. Because it's Do easier have- from the outside. I, you know, I should. I should. Uh-huh. Think about it. You can add. I know. It. I have to think about it. I, yeah, I am thinking about it. I, it's actually very, very sweet 
so my aunt who listens, you know, I've, I've t- said, mm-hmm. talked about my aunt Penny all the time. So my aunt Penny listens every week and she wrote the sweetest thing to me that just made me cry because of course she listened to the interview with David Kessler, which is, you know, big deal, obviously. He's mm-hmm. super, very well known. I probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest living grief expert we have around now. And she wrote to me, you're my hero. Oh, um, but anyway, just to me, yeah, yeah, because I don't really think of myself very much as a hero, yeah, at all. Yeah, she just said, I'm so proud of you. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, as you said that, an award thing, it just made me think of her saying that to me. And well, I don't feel, feel that way, right? <laughs> right? But what I think about for you, I mean, the the Debbie Kessler, loved what you just said, you know, it's like the pinnacle. This is awesome to talk to him. But the the part that comes in is that every week you put yourself in a position every single week to get close to somebody else's pain. And, and that is a hero to me, that you get that close. You don't have to. You could just go, you know what? I don't need to hear what someone in Nebraska has for pain because I got enough of my own, you know, but you are all over absorbing this and getting close and allowing other people to learn from it. So I, I agree with Aunt Penny and, and <laughs> it is, she's what I think. Aunt Penny, Penny thinks this week as she hears yeah. me talk about her in this. And <laughs> well, I had what the back of sees me weeping on the video about that. I just, I have a hard time, um, um, you know, that's mm-hmm. that's hard for me to even hear in some ways because I just don't yeah. feel that way, right? I think none of us do. Yeah. So. Um, I have to go back. Holly said her award, this was in the comments, Stay Classy for Jonathan Kloss Forever 21 um, from Jonathan iPod Cast Coworker. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. Stay Classy. I like that one. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Dana mentioned, I love the getting out of bed award. I know we don't like to be told that we're strong, but when I hear that, I think to myself, I am. I got out of bed today. Yeah. And many people are agree of of thinking of you as a hero, and they agree with Aunt Penny. Um, <laughs> I should have even brought it up, but you got me so emotional when you said, what would your award be? And then I just started yeah. talking about her and cry. So anyway, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here, you know, it's interesting because is it Andrea said, Marcy, I feel that emotional about you and, and all you've done for us. You are my David. And I had that thought, you know, a lot of people, you know, can read about David Kessler, or go to some of his trainings, but you're, like I said, you've put yourself face to face with all of these moms and they feel that way about you. I mean, they feel that connection and that, um, so that's awesome. I, I go back to a, a long, long time ago, a song when you were talking about, you know, contemporary music and, you know, meaningful things. It was Thanks for Given to the Lord. It's a song like when we get to heaven, someone's going to say, hey, thanks for teaching Sunday school, because if you hadn't, I wouldn't be here. And the, and are you familiar with the song at all? It's so, oh, no, no, no. no. And I keep thinking about the woman who told me about Jesus um, with the felt board and all that stuff. But I often think when we get to heaven, the people who are going to walk up that you don't know that, you know, any of us. And, and it's not just you or I or David or anybody who does the work. It's all of the moms. It's the bedside nurse that we were talking about. It's all those things that someone's going to say, thank you for being a listening ear. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for just allowing me to take my mask off. All those things. It's just going to be so fun. <laughs> wow. You were just, we're just getting deep today, aren't we? I'm sorry. We started, no. I don't know what, Marcy, I have to say something. I have okay. to say something. Okay. About 10, 15 minutes ago, I looked at you and I thought, she hasn't cried this episode. Oh, did you? Yes. <laughs> so and maybe I'll, look at how far she's come. She's not even crying anymore. And maybe I'm weeping like crazy. You know what? You cursed me by I thinking know. it. And then what I was thinking is when you just said, oh, we're getting emotional here. I'm like, there, I did it. I, I got in there and I dug to make those things come out. I did. You made me cry. 
make me cry. <laughs> now, what's your award be, Marcy? Let's yeah. Make you cry. No, oh, no. yeah. You've got to but, do that because I just pushed you off an extra three weeks. Right, right. so they won't hear from me for a while. So yeah, they won't hear from you. You won't hear from her until January. Yeah, so it's just so awesome that we're all this community that's been built yeah. and and just the common. And, and, and you know, Gwen, you are so so important to me. Obviously, oh, you know from oh, the very very beginning, it's been it's been you. <laughs> Uh, and and I still remember you saying that when what was that that you went to go speak at a group and you said you were Gwen and they said the Gwen you're the Gwen <laughs> yeah because well, my listeners love you and, and I'm sure there will be a million comments on the amazingness of Gwen because you are amazing well so incredibly helpful but you know again when when you you know we're talking about awards when I think of the awards. It is walking in heaven and someone saying, you touched me or you helped me or you you were compassionate. And it's like, that is what it's about. Yeah. And I have the best job in the world. And and part of it has been discovered or talked about tonight with the comment of you are the most real, authentic, heart changed, brave, amazing people. And I get to work with you. If I had to work with trivial problems all day long, oh, that'd be awful. <laughs> I, I agree with Dana's comment. Like, I can't, I don't have time for that stuff. No. I, it just, oh, uh, it's, yeah, it is a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to. It be, is. Right? Yeah, very much so. Very, very much so. Yeah. See, look, now the comments are coming. And agree, Gwen, you're a hero. So there you go. Um, well, it was funny that Dana brought up the fact that I surprised her at Brogan's food packing event last month because Michelle and I were talking and she was going and I said, I'm going to Minneapolis that day. But what was really interesting is when I walked in, I did hear someone say, is that Gwen? And I had no idea who it was. <laughs> and it was someone, a listener from Dana's family, it was either her mom or her mother-in-law, recognized me as I walked in and they're like, what would she be doing? It was really it's, fun. It's not Gwen. It's yeah. not Gwen. It's the amazing Gwen. Yeah. So cool. And and here, it was so, you know, it was Brogan's food packing event. It's MEA in Minnesota because all the kids have the, the time off school. And just the fact that all those kids were there doing something in his memory and his, it was so moving. I was only there for a little bit, but I was so impacted when I drove away thinking, you know, most people, it, it's a day off school and they were up early that, that October morning to do that. It was just amazing. Yeah. So I love the fact that you things were the best duo. I know. They put the best duo. I love yeah, that. That's our fantastic. award for tonight. Yeah. Our award. That's the award. Laverne Shirley. That's us. <laughs> All right. Any uh, party comments that you wanted to say before we closed up? No, I think I've said it. How awfully honored and proud I am of each and every listener and you and people who um, get up every day knowing that today could have more hurt and pain in it and you keep on living that right right it it is it does take a lot of bravery to get up in the morning knowing that today isn't going to be that much better than yesterday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely you know like in the on the long run things are going to slowly get better but each day isn't that much different than the day before and that can be really yeah. difficult very much so yeah honor yourself give yourself yeah. awards Right, because if you don't, no and one else get about a bad award is the gr is a great yeah. award to have. It is all right. Love it. Well, thank you. Thank okay. you. Take care. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. If you found this helpful and would like to support the podcast, please leave a five star rating and comment. To help financially, you can type Andy's mom one word to the number 53555. This provides a link to GiveButter, which allows donations through PayPal, Venmo, Apple Pay, or credit cards. GiveButter will provide a receipt of your tax-deductible donation. Or you can visit the donation page at andysmom.com slash donate. Always Andy's Mom is a registered 501c3 and can receive donations through Thrive in Financial and Benevity.
Marcy loves hearing from listeners. Please feel free to reach out to her via email at marcy at andysmom.com or on the Instagram or Facebook Always Andy's Mom accounts. Sign up for the email list to get weekly episode links as well as pictures of Marcy's guests and their children. Together, let's work to inspire hope one day at a time.